the vast mass majority of 7a real estate rent replacement deals i see and even if it's expansion real estate i'm going to buy a building and, and grow into it you need that leverage and then you can even add things on top of it a rent replacement deal essentially is a, let's just pretend i'm a i'm an attorney today and i've been renting for the last 10 15 years i'm solid i got great great income, great credit score. And now I'm like, you know what? I should probably own real estate. My business, I should move my business to, into, into a building that I own so I can control the rent. Um, I have no problem with the, the uh, covering debt coverage service on the, on the property because I make a lot of money with my business. And now I, I find on a rent replacement deal, can you potentially get a little bit higher leverage because you're, they're usually like the kind of cream of the crop uh, type of SBA type of loans? I mean, if you're talking about leverage, I mean, first of all, you have, you have three options there, right? Mainly conventional SBA 504 and 7A. Hey everyone. If you're looking for SBA guidance or advice, please book a call below and you can get on my calendar. We'll meet over zoom. We'll discuss your scenario, whether you're buying a new franchise or you're buying an existing business or you're doing a rent replacement deal and you're building your own building. We'll talk through the SBA 504 and 7 day programs, what loan program might be the best fit for your scenario. In addition, we also offer all different sorts of financing options. So I'm happy to book a call with you and we'll go from there. Anyways, look forward to meeting with you and thanks for your time. Yeah, leverage is gonna be your biggest distinguishing factor on all those three because conventional loan, you go into your bank, you're gonna put in 20% plus cover closing costs for the most part. Um, 504, you're putting in 10% and you're getting a low fixed interest rate. That's probably the most common option I'm seeing for that type of deal. And then 7A, you could put down 0%. Um, but we do that with all industries. Any industry that comes in the door, I'm financing the real estate purchase at 7 at 100% with the 7A program. I mean, that's just the norm for me. The SBA doesn't require any equity injection for the 7A program. Now, not all banks see it that way, but that's, that's the rules. And so I'm, we're good with it. Now I'll look at your balance sheet as a business owner. Like there should be equity somewhere and it's going to be on the balance sheet. Now, if you're, if it's not, and you're overly leveraged uh, and your balance sheet is upside down, that's going to be a problem. And maybe we will want a 10% injection, but the vast mass majority of 7A real estate rent replacement deals I see. And even if it's expansion real estate, I'm going to buy a building and, and grow into it. You need that leverage. And then you can even add things on top of it. You can say, Hey, you know, I also, I want to renovate the whole thing and I want to buy a piece of equipment and I want to buy inventory and you just throw it all into the pot and put it on that 25 year amortization. I mean, that's really the big strength of the 7A program. Yeah, guys, that's why I asked that question. And it's not just geared to professional business owners. It could be any business that you're, it's your business and you're going to occupy 51% of the space uh, if it's an existing business. And if it's a new business, don't they have to occupy like 60%? Is that the new rule? If they're, well, you're talking about if it's ground up construction, it, there's different rules. So yeah, okay, okay, it's, got it. you have to basically 60% and really it's 80% by the end of 10 years you have to occupy. Okay, got it. And that's just new construction. That's ground up. Yep. Yep. See, I'm asking questions. So I'm just fine tuning my SBA <laughs> abilities. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's good. Stay tuned for the next video.